friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I have a very exciting video for you guys today. It's actually going to take place at night, but I wanted to go ahead and open up the video and let you know what you can expect. This is going to be another video in the dark. I did one of these last fall and I'm in the fall spirit, so I thought let's just go with it. I'm going to be doing a try a chapter tag for horror books and I'm gonna be reading them in the dark. So I have a huge stack from my library. Some I know more about than others, but I'm gonna be trying the first chapter of each of these horror books tonight when it gets dark outside, and we're gonna be reading in the dark, trying the first chapter, seeing which ones sound interesting from the first chapter and which ones don't. So I thought I would go ahead and share the books with you now. That way when it gets dark outside, I can go ahead and get reading and share my thoughts. So the first one right here on the top, it's kind of hard to see, but it's, oh, it actually shows up really nice in the camera. It's Dark Debts by Karen Hall. And like I said, I don't know a lot about these, so I'll let you know more about them after I read the first chapter. It was published in 1996. It's the oldest one in the stack. This one on the stack is all Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donohue. Um, this wasn't the cover I was expecting, but it's the one that my library had. Um, this one was published this year, so it's a new release. I really, really want to love this one because it has these like terror pages in it. So like terror cards, and I'm just really, really excited about that. So it is a very pretty book. It has these stars um, as like chapter headers. I mean, look at that you guys the next one is will haunt you by brian kirk and i'm not really drawn to this cover but it is quite interesting because it has like these runes i don't know if you can see them in the background there um this one was published in 2019 and another new release published this year in 2021 the first two chapters are 13 pages i believe this is ya hold back the tide by melinda salisbury next up is this one again not a cover i'm particularly particularly drawn to Dark Water by Koji Suzuki published in 2004 is actually a collection of short stories and the first short story is 51 pages long so I don't know if I will read the first full short story but we shall see um another new release in 2021 is Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon and this came out this year in 2021 and the first chapter is 17 pages so so I think that's a good amount to read and I love that cover three more to go you guys um okay so this one is the toll by Sherry Priest and but the font is really really small so I'm only gonna read those first few pages Next up is one that I really love the cover of it's Alice isn't dead by Joseph Fink and this is the same author and maybe the same people behind the podcast um, welcome to Night Vale. Um, so this is Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink. And this is, it says, it isn't a story, it's a road trip. So a fast paced thriller about a truck driver searching across America for the wife she had long assumed to be dead. So very interesting. Um, released in 2018 and the first chapter is seven pages. Um, this is a, also a new release, The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor. I haven't read anything by C.J. Tudor. I actually had two other books by this author and I got rid of them, but I thought I would try this one. Um, the first chapter is 11 pages. So as you can see, I have a lot to read tonight. So that's why I wanted to show you like what I'm reading um, and I can give you like brief little snippets throughout the night to let you know how I'm enjoying it, if I'm getting scared, which ones I would be interested in reading the full novel, which ones like the writing is good and I'm interested in, which ones I'm not and so forth. So I'll see you guys later tonight.
All right, friends, I have made a bunch of progress. I have three more books to go. Um, these are the three that I still have to read, but I wanted to go ahead and share all of my thoughts because I've been taking notes on all of the first chapters. Now, <laughs> I kind of noticed a trend as I was reading through the first chapters. If I wasn't feeling it, I DNF'd it. The whole point in me doing this video, not only to share with you guys, but the reason I wanted to do it in the first place is I'm exploring the horror genre. I'm finding out what I like, what I don't like, and if I'm not liking something, it's better for me to just DNF it and keep searching. So a lot of these, yeah, not my thing so far. These are the ones that I have the highest hopes for. That's why I saved them for the end, hoping to turn this around. Um, let's go ahead and go through the ones that I've already tried. So I have already tried Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. This is the one with the really cool mushrooms on the front. Um, what I said was, is that there's a very important author's note in the beginning that I really, really appreciate. Um, in the very beginning, Vern gives birth. Um, also, Vern is partially blind and she is albino. Um, but the writing is very literary, very flowery, not my thing. So I will not be reading this one, unfortunately. Next up is The Toll by Sherry Priest. Um, what did I write about this one? Um, okay, so this one is actually a young adult. Uh, it opens with a gardening scene and talking about all the critters and the worms and the voles and the mice, etc. And I love gardening myself. So I really did enjoy that. And I actually read this portion twice because I was a little confused. So the main character is actually Cameron. He goes by Cam and he lives with his godmothers, Izzy and Claire, and they're like 80 plus years old. So he lives with them. Cam is 17 years old. When he was a toddler, his parents dropped him off at their house and they've been taking care of him ever since. Yeah, that's basically all I really read. And it took me a while to kind of figure out what was going on, but that's the gist that I got from that one. Um, moving on to Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury. This one is also, um, it's a YA horror book. Uh, it has a great opening liner. Let me read it to you. All right, so here are the rules of living with a murderer. I mean, right there, I was totally, totally hooked. Um, so love that one liner. Um, it has like UK lingo. Uh, so that makes me think it's going to be like a UK, like why horror. Um, so basically rules for living with a killer. Her dad is the killer. Um, I guess they live in like this, like wilderness area and she's having to like go check nets. She's very fearful of her father. Um, but she kind of has to do what he says for you know, fear of what he would do to her. Um, the first chapter is short. I was super intrigued. So I started the second chapter and it completely lost me. The writing really slowed down and it just wasn't my thing. So I will also not be continuing in that one. All right, another one that I have already tried is Dark Water by Koji Suzuki. And this is the Japanese um, one that has like short stories. So Ko um, takes her granddaughter Yuko for morning walks along this Cape Cannon place. It's like somewhere in Japan. Um, and Ko's son and family are visiting her for a week and her granddaughter Yuko really likes scary stories. So Ko indulges her and the first story is called Floating Water and it couldn't hold my attention. It was too wordy. It was too descriptive and it would like go off on these tangents and not really like stay on track with like the main plot of the story. So, and like I said, the first uh, short story was like 50 some pages. So I just didn't feel like continuing on in that one. I do like the idea of it being like her telling her granddaughter these short stories. So 
cool premise, just not my preference for writing. All right, next up, I tried Will Haunt You by Brian Kirk. And so this one, there is this aging heavy metal rock group that's performing in a bar and it does go in detail about their music and the bar and the people that are in this rock group. It wasn't really touching on the synopsis of the book yet, um, but it felt very like a dude's book. You know, it was like all these old dudes doing dude things and I just like, I'm not here for that. So I decided to stop that one. Of course, I started with Dark Debts and this one was, okay, so this one was interesting. So it opened up with this priest named Michael being questioned in court by this being questioned in court. And there's this reporter named Tess that he mentions and he finds her really attractive. Um, and then he, somewhere along the way, he mentions that he had this brush with evil and he believes it had done something to him. Um, and then, so after that chapter, which it was hard to get through that chapter to be completely honest, but it was almost like a prologue and then I went into the next chapter. So chapter one is six months later and it follows a totally different storyline totally different people um so i wasn't really vibing with the writing in this one um it was very bland but also very wordy at the same time so i decided to not continue on in that one all right so we are going to try our ya story this is all our hidden gifts and this is the one that i really really hope that i like because it's such a pretty book with all of these great tarot cards in it i just finished reading the first chapter of all our hidden gifts and this one is YA also, like I said, it's set in a high school or like kind of like a boarding school or something like that, I guess. And the one girl, I don't know how to say her name, the main character, it's M-A-E-V-E, -E, so Maeve, Maeve, I don't know, Maeve, I don't know. Anyway, um, so she gets in school suspension because she threw a shoe at a teacher. Well, she didn't hit the teacher, but she hit the board beside the teacher. And, um, so I guess like one of the other teachers, uh, sends her downstairs, like in the basement area to this place called like the Chokey. And it's, I guess, um, uh, she was saying that it's like really gross down there because like the school floods and it doesn't get good ventilation down there so it's like really musty and dusty um so she's cleaning out this chokey and she's you know throwing out all this old furniture and going through these boxes and you know all of this and she finds this old like um walkman and she's listening to this tape and she's talking about the music and she's talking about how this closet, she has to like put a door in it to keep the door open. And she's like, wow, it's like pretty big. Like four girls could fit in here. And she's thinking for like hide and go seek or something. And the next thing you know, she's listening to the music. She's in the chokey cleaning it out and the chair gets brushed out somehow. And she gets closed in there and she's like screaming to get out or whatever. And finally the teacher comes down and uh to check on her and she's like oh thank goodness like is it lunchtime and she's like what it's four o'clock it's time to go home you didn't take a break and she's like no um so then she says oh i didn't know you were into tarot cards and she's like what are you talking about and she says she looked down in her hands and she had a deck of tarot cards so not really sure how i feel it was definitely like easier to read than any of the other books that I have read, but I didn't really get a sense of the story yet. I think it's just picking up because like she just got the tarot cards, you know? Um, but yeah, like I said, lots of tarot cards in here. So I don't know about this one, but so far the first chapter was okay. Right, next up is The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. All right, I just finished reading the prologue a newspaper article in the first chapter of burning girls or the burning girls by cj tudor and this is not going to be my thing either none of that stuff really flowed very well the writing was not my favorite um i think it's going to be like one of those uk um books and i'm sorry but i just if given the choice 
I will not choose this. So it's going to be a no for me on this one. And now we are moving on to our last book, you guys. If I am being completely honest, this is the book that I really hope I love. Out of all the synopsises, out of everything that I thought I was going to like or not like, this is the one. I saved it to the end because this is the one I think I'm going to like the most. Fingers crossed, you guys. Let's do it. Okay, so I just finished reading the first chapter of Alice Isn't Dead, and I forgot that this is an LGBT woman to woman um, book. Um, so you have a character, Keisha, who's going to look for her wife, um, Alice, and the title says Alice Isn't Dead, but. Um, maybe she is she disappeared or something like that okay so the first chapter Keisha is at a um, rest stop it's like a gas station slash diner thistle um, and the first two lines are Keisha Taylor settled back into the booth and tried to enjoy her turkey club the turkey club did not make this easy so in other words the turkey club was disgusting so she notices this guy at like another table eating this omelet and it's actually so disgusting and this is like the first book that I was like Ooh, gross oh my god like so she is noticing this guy and he's eating this omelet and then he randomly comes over and sits at her table and she's just totally disgusted by this guy like the way he looks the way he smells the way he's eating and like it's just so disgusting right and then she's like watch this so he goes to another table and grabs this other guy and then walks out of the diner and the girl's like what the heck so she starts going after him and the waitress is like are you gonna pay and she's like yeah so she like gives money to the waitress or whatever and goes outside and sees the thistle man and i just call him the thistle man because he had like the word thistle on his shirt he is like cradling this guy like eating this guy and she's like oh my god i have to get out of here so she jumps in her truck and pulls away and i guess there was another person that noticed what was going on that was like hidden behind a pump had like their hood up or something like that and they don't reveal who that was but then i was so intrigued that i started the second chapter and i only read the first page of the second chapter but it kind of jumps away from that and it talks about alice how she's like the complete opposite of keisha and how like how much easier um Keisha's life was with Alice in it and things like that so that's what reminded me that it was like an LGBT possibly um thing like a, ma a female female um romance and yeah so this one actually sounds really really good but really really gruesome at the same time um I probably will like read a little bit more to see if it's something that I want to like actually continue in but it did hold the most promise so that's awesome. Here are the nine horror books that I tried the first chapter of. Some I definitely enjoyed more than others. Most of them I couldn't get into the writing and I'm not interested in pursuing like reading the full novel. Um, the only one is probably the last one, Alice Isn't Dead, because I love road trips. I want to read a female-female um, story, and it was the most disgusting, the most horror, um, because the Thistle Man, just the way they were describing the Thistle Man, it was really disgusting and disturbing. And then he started, like, eating the person, <laughs> like, and there's the mystery of, like, what happened to her wife. So that is the one that I am the most interested in, which is great. Also, now that I think about it, let me find it in the stack here. So that is what is on the end pages. Thistles. Oh my gosh, so that makes it that much creepier. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's the book that scared me the most, that I'm the most interested in. But I really did enjoy doing this video because like I said, it gives me a taste of like what the horror genre has in store to offer me. And yeah, so that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye.